Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special CUBE conversation. I'm coming to you remote from our Boston area studio in Marlboro, Massachusetts, and really happy to welcome to the program, actually from down the road from where I'm sitting, but testing our coast to coast, uh, live to air, remote capabilities. Uh, of course, uh, everybody is working from home or uh, things like that. Uh, Rob Streche, uh, CUBE alumni and a friend of the program. Rob, it's uh, great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Really glad to uh, help you guys out and get on here and talk about what's going on because this remote thing is definitely going to be uh, the wave for the next month or two at least. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Rob, you know, you spend a lot of your time, uh, you know, talking to companies about strategic planning. Uh, and, you know, first thing for you is, you know, in the industry, sometimes we talk about these black swan events, the things that, you know, we had our plans in place. A lot of companies either had their 2020 sales kickoffs or were getting ready for them. And all of a sudden, basically everything that you were planning for, uh, let's stop and reevaluate because uh, coronavirus stuff is hitting. Uh, economic conditions uh, globally are, are being impacted. What's the first thing that you tell people when you're advising when you know something completely unexpected and far reaching uh, that we might not have full information on? It's yeah, I, I think there's it's a, a great way to tar you know target and say okay where can I trim the fat, but at the same time where do I not want to over rotate or panic? And I think that's a big piece of it is that you don't want to go and panic too much and say, hey, we have to throw everything out. Um, I think there's an opportunity and there's definitely opportunities, but if you're uh, looking at the different verticals that are being hit by this, if you look at things like healthcare, uh, we have you know hymns that's supposed to be going on this week that was canceled and all of uh, the medical professionals and IT professionals at those hospitals are pretty much on lockdown. So if you're selling into that vertical, maybe then it is time to panic a little bit or find another vertical or understand how you go cross vertical uh, in a way. So you have to evaluate what's going on, but don't panic, don't may overreact to these types of uh, events. Yeah, so Rob, you, you've worked with a lot of companies that provide you know, disaster recovery in the IT space, it's, you know, how do I deal with a failure? Um, one of the things that I know a lot of companies look at is when things go wrong, when there, there is some natural disaster or like what we're having today is, you know, do I jump in and say, hey, we can offer things. Uh, you know, you see a lot of the companies that are providing remote services, uh, take your Google, Microsoft, Zooms are, you know, hey, here's a free tier that you're able to use, but how much do you jump on this as a marketer? Or how much do you just say, hey, we're here for you. Um, if there's anything we can do to help there, but you don't want to be seen as ambulance chasing or trying to profit off of uh, some widespread disasters. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. The ambulance chasing part, you have to be uh, use a little common sense when you're going into these. And I, I think that goes a long way. Uh, you know, you don't want to be seen as ambulance chasing. And for instance, uh, some, some of, uh, those small to medium-sized companies I've been watching in the tech and talking to some of their teams, they're putting out information saying, you know, hey, we're we're still up. Uh, if they're shipping hardware, hey, we're still within our lead times. We had, you know, built out enough uh, capacity prior to this and we'll be able to ship within 14 days of an order. So reassuring their customers uh, that they can get uh, the kit out to them. At the same time, they're saying, hey, here's what we're seeing from our customers that you're having trouble even once we do ship it, you don't have somebody on site to take it in. Uh, so we can offer services to help you with that. So helping them do staff augmentation or do things in a different manner, uh, I see that as you know, not the ambulance chasing aspect of it. Uh, I think if you're marketing into it, it's a little tough when you say, hey, well, I'm the best uh, remote desktop uh, thing going and you, everybody can work from home, but uh, you know, and trying to say, you know, and by the way, you know, you have to buy into this particular tier to get your entire company going. I, I think, you, again, you can look at how do you share maybe the pain or share a loss leader going in uh, and, you know, look to build that. If you have a, if you have confidence in your product, you'll get them on board and they'll continue to do this and they'll continue to move forward with it. Because like you said, 
I don't think anybody was necessarily prepared for uh, quarantine of an entire country uh, like Italy or something of that nature. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the remote work is definitely a very hot topic. That doesn't necessarily mean that today is the day to start the 5,000 person virtual desktop uh, project. Uh, exactly. Because we, we know how long these things have, have a lead time. Um, Rob, I want to ask you, actually, you know, when you talk, talk to customers, you spend a lot of time uh, in, in your, your, your career talking to customers. Uh, you know, one of the buzzwords we've had in the industry is digital transformation. One of the big outcomes of digital transformation is to be able to react and move fast and be more agile. So we'd just love to get your take on what you're hearing from customers, where, you know, it, of course it's a spectrum, but, you know, what they're doing and, you know, is this something that they should put on hold? Is it something that, uh, you know, is going to help them prepare for uh, things that they weren't necessarily thinking about? I, I think it's the latter, right? I think you, you're you're really, I would push in on digital transformation at this point in time, uh, because you're you're not going to know what's going to break until you get into these situations. And I would say that, uh, you know, we've seen a couple in the financial industry as we've gone through the volatility in the markets, where they pushed in on digital transformation, or there's some startups that have really pushed in on doing things in a new way from the traditional financial services companies. And they found out, hey, stuff is breaking. And you know they're going to pay some fines to the SEC and some of the traditional ones that have their digital transformation projects, they bumped into this same exact thing where they were having outages. So it's not just the new startups, it's some of the older, uh, more established players that are finding out that, hey, you don't know until you get into that war, you don't know until you, you know, engage that enemy per se as that black swan event what's going to break so push in you know i would almost double down on it and say listen this is going to be the way that helps us smooth these out as we can distribute things out we don't have necessarily one data center where everybody has to go to and now that entire county is locked down or there's the national guard surrounding it and you can't get to it yeah, uh, Rob, I'm wondering if you have any uh, commentary on just the, the, the general dispersion of the workforce. Uh, you've worked for a variety of sizes of company. Uh, you've been a remote worker. You've worked for uh, companies that are, you know, so you, where you're far separated from the headquarters. Uh, any kind of tips or recommendations from, from your background uh, that, that you'd have for people uh, in today? Yeah, I think, again, for the people who haven't done it before, it, it, it is an adjustment. You actually find that you work more hours uh, being at home than you would in a natural in, an office. I think also, how do you keep your sanity uh, when you're uh, really distant from people? And how do you keep that connection and that culture? Uh, I definitely think that these solutions like Teams and Slack and uh, what have you, and Zoom and WebEx have come a long way to help connect people. Uh, and I think it's really leveraging those tools around you to have that connection. Uh, and I think that, you know, we've seen uh, some of the announcements of people about uh, putting out guidelines of, hey, here's how we have a remote force. Uh, and I've seen actually more, uh, and it's been the trend out on the West Coast for a little while, where their engineering teams, uh, the dev teams are very diverse and very disparate because you can't find everybody in the valley uh, anymore. So how, you know, maybe some of the people are in Washington, maybe they're in Oregon, California, you have some on the East Coast or even over in the Ukraine, for instance, uh, trying to create events uh, to bring everybody together, uh, doing more outreach as an executive to the entire uh, company becomes critical because sharing of that information is what people want to understand. They want to feel connected back into what's going on at what they perceive as corporate. Yeah, uh, so some some great uh, commentary there, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen uh, there's plenty of the software companies out there that you know, have not only tooling, but best practices on how to do this, as well as through social media, I've seen a lot of blog posts, things on Twitter and the like. Uh, yeah, and, and some things that you don't think about as much, you know, I'm not regularly a remote worker, but right, make sure you take time to eat, make sure you've blocked out the hours if you're gonna, you know, have meals with family. And, you know, yeah. something I always noticed is, oh my gosh, I might spend an entire day like this on conference calls or sitting and working. And as opposed to if you're in the office, you you get up, you walk around, you talk to some people and it's like, 
you, you need to make sure you stretch a little bit <laughs> because yeah. Yeah, absolutely. otherwise you can end up sitting for eight hours and that's really not good. <laughs> yeah, definitely need those mental breaks. Yeah. All right, Rob, I uh, want, want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, what's, you know, let, let's kind of put beyond some of the things, you know, in, in our, that are right in front of us right now, uh, you know, g give you kind of an open a technology, a space, you know, what, what's interesting you uh, out in the market here in the early parts of 2020? Yeah, I think there's a lot of very interesting things going on with AI. And I think people are finally starting to get past the hype of AI this, AI that, and trying to look at what the use cases are behind AI and how that's really going to help uh, reinvent some of the technology that we have used. I kind of always say that everything old is new again. And I think there's going to be some great new uh, tech coming out that will help enable these types of digital transformations. And I see a lot of new companies approaching AI and not just saying, hey, I'm an AI company, but here's the use case that I'm really fulfilling. Uh, and I think that's showing some of the maturity. Uh, I think that's going to help as this artificial intelligence or machine learning really starts to push in and help people uh, become more operationally efficient. So maybe then we can start to realize some more of cloud and, you know, more of this, hey, I had this data center, now I am moving everything to the cloud versus, well, I'm going to move it, but I'm going to lift and shift and I still have the operational uh, legacy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if I can do a little compare contrast, it, back in the big data world, uh, everybody used to always complain that we had the best minds in our business working on how we could optimize people clicking uh, on an ad. And when I look at AI, there's a lot of tech for good out there. There's amazing outcomes. Uh, there, there's things that it can really be transformational. All right, Rob, uh, I, I know you've been you've been doing a little bit more writing. Uh, you, you're posting on LinkedIn uh, some of your strategy. If, if people want to learn more and keep an eye on what you're doing, uh, what, what would you recommend? Yeah, I would say uh, go onto my Twitter feed, uh, Real Stretch, and or go to my LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me there. Uh, it's Rob Streche. Uh, you know, you can find me there pretty easily. There's not many Streches in the world, so uh, feel free to connect with me and view my articles there. And really, this has been a lot of fun. All right. Well, always good to get, uh, you know, two boys from Parsippany, New Jersey uh, to get together, uh, talk about uh, technology and share it with our community. Rob, great to catch up with you. Thanks, Stu. Take care. All right. I'm Stu Miniman, everybody. And thank you so much for watching The Cube.